Prince Harry being interviewed by both American media, British media alike, all ahead of the release of his memoir entitled Spare. Uh, we're going to bring in right now a British royal journalist, Josh Rahm, friend of the program. Josh, you and I were talking about some of the leaks uh, that trickled out last week from the memoir itself, but let's dive in uh, to some of these really explosive revelations coming from two interviews Prince Harry did that aired yesterday uh, in Britain on the ITV and here stateside on CBS's 60 Minutes. Uh, I think a lot of us here stateside watched the 60 Minutes interview with Anderson Cooper. Um, what struck out to you? We're going to play a clip of some of that interview. Uh, my impression, Josh, was that it seems like the entire focus of this whole charade is now entirely on Harry himself. Meghan almost seems like she's in the background. Mm, absolutely. Well, the one thing that I think can be achieved, uh, well, I think that Harry's achieved, he's upset pretty much everyone. He's upset the palace, he's upset the public, he's upset the army, and he has upset his family his brother. So, you know, it, it's it's one thing after another. This interview, this book, it has it all. It has family drama, physical fights, call the wicked stepmother, drugs, sex, Harry the rock star. That is what we're now calling him. He's done more sex, drugs and rock and roll than the average rock star, it seems, by this book. Yes, I say that as a joke, but all of those things are very much in the book. He's very open about it. This is raw. This is unflinching. This is deeply personal, and it's a personal attack on his family, both not just the institution, but how they are as a family. But, you know, like the previous records before him, this book has inaccuracies. His interviews have inaccuracies. One minute he's saying, well, the family needs to be held for account. The next minute he's saying that Prince Charles apologized, saying that he should have done more over dinner at Highgrove. Again, full of inaccuracies, left, right and center. But yes, I do agree with you, Andrew. The one thing that this dispels, especially to the British public, you know, I will say there was a narrative out there, whether it was the public talking about this or the press, there was a simple narrative out there that somehow, and I know a lot of royal commentators uh, were, and, and royal, not just royal journalists, but royal insiders also was kind of saying this narrative. I've personally spoken to people mm -hmm. that actually kind of also spoke this narrative that they that they thought that somehow yeah. Meghan Markle led Prince Harry astray. But no, what this interview shows, it's very much Prince Harry. He had this long-standing resentment against the institution fueled and caused by the trauma of his childhood seen through a prism of the utter hatred he despises the press especially the british tabloid press and because he views everything in his life through this prism it distorts the facts and i will say this i you know this whole country just wants prince harry now to be happy they want him to shut up about this stop complaining about the royal family if you want to go to california go to montecito do all these incredible documentaries you know do that more you are more than happy we are more than happy for you to do that we want you to be happy in this interview he came across as scarred I will say ever so slightly unhinged, I think. It, it's very much a case of, you know, he is. it's very clear that he is scarred, he's traumatised from his childhood. He hasn't been given the proper space in which to grieve for his mother. The royal family aren't a tactile family. They're not a huggy, touchy-feely sort of family. Yes, they are more formal, and yes, that really hasn't helped the situation, but he has been shown love. But because he's got this long-standing resentment against the institution, fueled by the hatred of the press, he distorts the facts because of that. And I think a lot of the British public are very much worried about his mental well-being, bearing in mind he said, yes, he's in the happiest place that he's ever been, he's yeah. got a family. However, these interviews, they come across as purely bitter. He yeah. just can't let this go. Josh, I'm struck because uh, in the same breath, Harry will say that he you know, looks forward to uh, some type of reconciliation in the near future, kind of saying that the ball is in the court of King Charles, of his brother Prince William. Uh, and then in the same breath, 
it almost gives a sense, at least what he's saying, that, you know, there is no coming back uh, from any of this now that it, as so much of it has been publicly disclosed. Let's just show our viewers uh, one of these sound bites from 60 Minutes uh, last night. Let's listen. How many people around the world watched you and your brother grow up and feel like you two were inseparable? And yet in reading the book, you have lived separate lives from the time your mom died. Mm -hmm. Even when you were in the same school, in high school. Sibling rivalry. Your brother told you, pretend we don't know each other. Yeah, and at the time it hurt. I couldn't make sense of it. I was like, what do you mean? I'm, we're now at the same school. Like, I haven't seen you for ages. Now we get to hang out together? He's like, no, 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 when we're at school, we don't know each other. And I took that personally. But yes, you're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head. Like, we had a very similar traumatic experience. And then we, we dealt with it two very different ways. Okay, so uh, you can see there, Josh, that he was, you know, trying to describe where this, you know, evolution came from, uh, why Harry and William now are so estranged. And they said, Harry said, you know, they were so close back in their school days. Now they can barely be seen together. Uh, and who knows when the last time they even spoke together. I always ask you, what's the palace saying about all this? Have they even weighed in at least anything? Well, the palace have broken their silence a little bit by wishing um, Her Royal Highness, uh, the Princess of Wales, Catherine, a happy birthday. She is 41 today. Apart from that, the palace aren't saying anything. They are remaining silent, a dignified silence. Silence speaks volumes. The palace very much feel that this is a family matter, but therefore it is a private matter. But Harry is airing all the private family dirty laundry out in the public for the entire globe to see and feast on bearing in mind all he does is he says he wants privacy but yet but by wanting privacy where does he go the entertainment capital of the world bearing in mind the british press is one of the most highly regulated journalism industries in the world the tv broadcasters are regulated by a body called ofcom and the newspapers the magazines the online outlets they're regulated by the independent press standards organization otherwise known as ipso so for harry to say well where's where's the policing for the press well the, the press are very much policed they're very much regulated um, unlike some of the US outlets, there's not some some of this intense regulation um, in the US. The US has more relaxed uh, laws around uh, the press and freedom of the press. So, you know, I find it very funny that Harry, in one breath, you know, you said it there, in one breath, he will say he wants reconciliation. In the same breath, he will call his stepmother, um, the Queen Consort, now Camilla, uh, he will call her a villain. You know, a one one minute he and uh, Meghan Markle are speaking to Oprah about racism in the royal family, about speculation for the colour of their baby skin. Uh, the next minute they're accepting a Kennedy's uh, Honours Award um, for, for standing up to structural racism within the royal family. But now Harry's coming out but saying, no, the family isn't racist, they're yeah. simply unconsciously biased. So, you know, inaccuracy, same breath here, there and everywhere, all all over the place but you know we saw in that clip i think this is what's actually most disturbing about the interview because i am myself a younger brother so i can not relate to harry in this respect but you know i think all of us who have older siblings or at least older siblings who have younger siblings can relate to the fact of oh they don't want their younger sibling necessarily cramping their style totally. you know these are trivial family matters that harry is blowing up into childhood traumas. Yeah. And that's what I think is so disturbing. I genuinely think because he's known nothing other than the formality of the institution, the formality of the royal family, he doesn't know actually what a normal family relationship is. What, what you know, he doesn't realize that actually day-to-day -day Brits and day-to-day -day Americans have sibling rivalries like anyone else, except totally. his sibling and rivalry has been blown up on the world stage to the point where he is now attacking. And actually, there's one scene that Harry describes um, and he talks about in this interview or at least in the UK interview there was an excerpt from the book that was read about um, 
Prince Harry um, going for a stroll with his father, uh, then Prince Charles, and his brother Prince William after Prince Philip's funeral. And they're going in, they're going for a stroll in the garden. They, they're trying to clear the air and they're trying to chat. And then Prince William says, um, I swear on mummy's life, Harold, I love you. I just want you to be happy. And Harry emphasizes in the book how this was a code to only be used in this in 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 emergencies this was stop everything this is what we're saying here but harry just turned back to william and said but i don't believe you i love you too yeah. your stubbornness is incredible but i don't believe you and actually i think you know harry is coming across as really quite stubborn because in one breath he's saying okay um, you know, my brother used a code in case of emergencies and he's trying desperately to reach out. It, sh it sent shivers by, uh, down my spine. It, 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 it sent me cold. But yet he's saying, even though his brother is using the emergency code, hmm. he, he says he doesn't believe his brother. Yeah. And yet these are intense, private conversations, raw and unflinching conversations, bearing in mind he's revealing all, but yet says in the same breath, that he wants reconciliation, yeah. but yet continues to attack his family, not just for the institution, but on a very personal level. So this is the thing, the palace is remaining silent. It is a family uh, matter, a private matter, but I don't see a way back from this. Okay. I really don't. Josh, Josh, we gotta go. I, it's I'm not sorry. just, it, I was gonna say just yeah. very quickly, it's not just attacking the institution and the idea of the monarchy and the work that they do, he's attacking them now personally. And yeah. that makes all the difference.